This podcast solely serves informational purposes and no content within this publication is intended to be or should be interpreted as investment advice or a suggestion to buy shares in the highlighted company. Hello and welcome to Weekend Markets. It's uh, Friday the 22nd of March. You'll be watching this hopefully on Saturday the 23rd of March, which is apparently my 22nd wedding anniversary, so it's a very special (laughs) day. Train Robber's only got 25. I'll be looking forward to enjoying myself. And uh, apparently for our quarter century, we're going to re- revisit the, the steps of our honeymoon uh, in you Egypt. Look, you look over the moon, Zach. You look and, over the moon. Uh, in Egypt and, and in Mallorca. So uh, that's given me something to look forward to. Does your wife watch these videos, Zach? Because she's not going to be overly enamored with your enthusiasm. Uh, no, she hates the stock market. She hates everybody in the stock market. Uh, she All she does is take the money from my hard work, that's all. But that's what marriage is all about. Well, just, just while I remember, and I don't want to sort of, you know, uh, repeat my jokes by any means, because that would be a terrible thing to do. But I can see that you're obviously ready to deliver her some milk tray again for the wedding anniversary. You're wearing the tray. No, I, think, I think, yes, no, it is the milk tray, you know, the milk tray man. I think that's, uh, <laughs> I think that, that was quite current when we were when we were courting. Have you not changed? Have you not changed since last week? No, I haven't actually. It's the same. It's the same one. Same down, down drops in the same place as well. There's no need to change a, a winning formula. Um, the the Bill Trade Man, because he was moving around, the down drop just blew away and he was like climbing up stuff and doing all that stuff. But, <laughs> you uh, left it on the chocolates. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually, no, that's a good idea. Do they still make milk trade? Because, you know. Um, I think they do, yeah. I think they do. It's probably actually this size now. It's probably just like a little, a little tiny thing. There's shrinkflation and everything. I think it's known as a as a, a retro chocolate, right? So you know, if you're at your twenty second wedding anniversary, where you could uh, you could creep in in the middle of the night and put a little card under the under the pillow. I always creep in in the middle of the night anyway, so uh, I know what you're saying. <laughs> I know what you're saying it's on my tiptoes. Um, so so this week the market is uh, in, in a more ce- celebratory mood than I am. Um, clearly. Well, yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, we, we, we sort of truly risk off at the moment, right? I mean, there's even some green bars. I did actually look just before I joined the call. Uh, you know, I looked at the FTSE numbers again. And what are we? I'm just looking at it live now. 7951, right? And what's the all-time high? 8012. So it could even be today. Uh, it's interesting that the FTSE is, uh, until, you know, the last week, the FTSE was the same the same value as uh, when I did get married 22 years ago. Um, or in fact, when I met the wife in 2000, I think that, that was the last time uh, it was... Uh, it was, <laughs> that was, in the, that was the all-time high. When you I'm met actually, her, it was the all-time high. <laughs> I've, uh, I've, I've uh, produced uh, four children and put on you know, four stone in, in that time, and the FTSE is the same level. I mean, it's, it's just outrageous, isn't it? Uh, and I yeah. don't actually want to call the FTSE up higher because it's been like there's been about a hundred times when it looked like it might actually break out and it never did uh, and so you know you sort of have to wait for it to go to sort of nine thousand before you say actually it's safe it's actually going to go to a, a <laughs> nine thousand for four it, years it, it is it is shocking how bad the london market's been and um what i normally say is that you know why why buy shares when you have a dead cert in the housing market Yes, indeed. Okay. Or the US market, what it looks or like. Or just go, go into a casino. I mean, you know, it's actually more attractive going to a casino because there's no stamp duty and, you know, you don't get taxed on your winnings and everything else. Um, but if, but if, but on a serious note, I mean, you know, we had the interest rate decision yesterday and uh, um, whatever his name is, the governor of the Bank of England, or for Andy Bailey, is Andrew Bailey. He, uh, you know, he, he was relatively dovish, followed Powell on the you know, previous day, and relatively dovish. So potentially this could, you know, could, this could underpin a continued rise now. This could be the pivot that you've all been waiting for. I think, yeah, but didn't anybody ask him why he didn't lower interest rates last last month or last time? Well, I, I didn't see the interview, but I would guess not. I mean, it's 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 a it's a Juneish expectation now, isn't it? June, July. Yeah, but yeah, why is he waiting so long? It's ridiculous. People are literally uh, they've got mortgages up to their eyeballs, and they're in a lot of distress at the moment. And um, the only reason I can think of, you know, keeping rates. Uh, much higher than inflation is just to uh, ruin the government's chance of getting re-elected. Well, it's obviously, and it's, a, and, and, it's, and it's a fair point because we had inflation on Tuesday as well, didn't we? And that was down quite a bit compared to the expectation. Two to two point nine or two point six or something now, whatever it was, two point nine, I think, in the UK. So, so, so you're right. You know, bearing in mind it's a, you know, it's a, it, it's the interest rate effect is going to lag any improvement. You know, if you did it now and you only want to get down to two percent, there's an argument that you know they could be doing it right now. I think you've got a valid point there. Yeah, I, I, I never liked the idea of having an independent Bank of England anywhere. I think I think that's wrong. I think you have to have an elected body making uh, key 
um, investment and financial decisions, just having a, a bunch of, uh, I was going to say pen pushers, but I'm not sure they even do that anymore. Um, you know, in charge of the, the the system, I think that's wrong. I don't. I don't. I think it should be part of government. I think the idea that you know the you know, Gordon Brown's move to make the Bank of England independent was wrong, and obviously, um, you know, it's uh, it's been something that I think over the years has been proved to be uh, you know correct. At least if they get it wrong, if they're elected, then you sort of say, well, okay, that's fine. But uh, they were way behind the curve in the in the in the tens. And uh, in the pandemic as well, the way they the way they behaved that created the inflation, and um, I don't think that was a great move. And now they're probably behind the curve. Uh, well, but they're not the only one. It's, the whole world has done that, right? I mean, you know, the, the, the US was far far behind the curve in terms of raising rates, right? They were way way late, um, and now they're probably late and, and you know, feeling the harm now when they're trying to reduce rates. Who uh, legs the Fed? Who legs the Fed? Is that is that uh, is that a government? Uh, who what, sorry? Who elects the Fed, you know, the Fed chairman. I suppose that's a little bit of the president, so slightly. It's appointed by the president, isn't it? Yeah. It's, really, it's appointed by the president. Yeah, it is, because um, cause, cause after, well, who was before um, uh, Powell, the little lady, um, Yoda, Yellen, right? Did I say Yoda? Obviously, it didn't mean Yoda. Um, uh, so uh, so uh, Yellen was uh, was the the, uh, the chair of the Fed. You can edit that out. That's fine. You can edit that out. No, I'm going to keep it in. Um <laughs> <laughs> and, and um i didn't mean it. it was just a slip of the tongue and um um yeah so uh yeah because because trump booted her out um and um, brought in power i think it was then um and then um and obviously then he pointed uh then biden pointed her as his whatever the whatever secretary of state or whatever she is of the of, of the finance world within the, the democrat um, government um no doubt she will be out again in um in november or, or january next year should mr trump get in Oh, she's had a good run anyway. So, uh, no, so it is. It is looking better. I think uh, as a few weeks ago, I wrote that you know the nascent bull market's there, and um, you know obviously apart from the, the FTSE is probably the last indicator of that. You know, it's uh, it's the companies going bust or you know throwing in the towel and M and A speculation, which probably signals you know the end of a, a bear market. Um, but it does look. Well, a I bit think better. AIM is probably the last one, right? <laughs> That's still. Yeah, good. exactly. Yeah. No, I looked at the I looked at the AIM chart yesterday. It's still just sort of like you know uh, wriggling around in a in the mid. I think mid it's range. up a little bit today. I mean, yeah, well, yeah, a little bit. I, mean, I don't. It's diff- difficult for index to go up when, like, uh, you know, it loses a new, it loses a constituent almost every day. So uh, it's probably <laughs> rather. Uh, it is rather difficult to uh, yeah. maintain its momentum. You know. Oh. Or some of his flagship companies want to raise money, surprisingly, but we'll talk about them later. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I think the uh, well, there was a, the, I think there was a new IPO. There's a new IPO from uh, Carl Friel, um, which is an energy uh, uh, project, and EGT. Um, uh, the, the name will come back to me at some point, uh, probably in the next week. And, um, and then there's also Power Metal um, with a new AIM listing, I think, as well, which is great. So. There's two two coming back and like fifty going away, you know. That yeah, yeah. But it, well, but it is got, it is good. Well, we've got um, we've got uh, later on in the show we've got a short um, interview that we're going to uh, to put in. So before we do that, before I talk about um, you know, some of the smaller stocks, do you want to go through your charts again? Do you want to put them on the screen? Yeah, that would be. Uh, if, uh, it's always I, it's always like the first time every time I do this, which is not which is not great, right? Um, but, I know uh, the viewers have commented. To be fair, There's yeah, I mean, it's just it, I need I need an assistant of some kind, you know, to help me with this. <laughs> um, but no, there were one or two nice movers actually this uh, this uh, week. I don't know if this is working. I think it is. Yes, um, just the five day movers. So um, obviously APQ Global. I don't think anybody has ever heard of. But uh, XL Media. I totally missed that uh, going up. IMC. I uh, sort of that was just of one. You know, there was a a big move one day, which was also within the day, which I also uh, missed. I like the ones which is a ra- rather slower. I think the real, um, probably the, in terms of the retail investors, the real winner was Oracle Power, which finally uh, turned around. And I think it's turned around with no news, which is even better. So, um, you know, I had my initial target there at, you know, 037 or whatever it is. Um, but it's looking, you know, r- remarkably good. So, uh, mm. thank you know, thank the Lord that's back. You know, so that is a win. They know they've got their the various uh, projects around the world. In Australia, they've got a gold project and uh, I think a green hydrogen project uh, as well in Pakistan. And then the other one which rose well was Tirupati on um, direct to buying. 
we got a new executive director, and uh, he stepped up to the plate and bought uh, some shares, I think under 5p, so maybe the plate was making okay. a bit of money. Uh, okay. Chesterfield, I think there's a board restructuring, there's new people coming to the board, which is actually something that's happened with a few companies uh, now. The uh, you know the 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 old guard have been either left or being you know, kicked out or given up the ghost, etc. And I think you know, so I think ECR was one of those companies. I think Katoro perhaps is one of those companies as well. I think Sean Way from Power Metal's gone there, and uh, Chesterfield uh, has gone up off the back of that too. So nice to see a few uh, green shoots on that. I see uh, the one that jumps out at me there is is Codal Minerals because they've had a great week again. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure where they are today. Maybe sort of 42 or 43 or something. Uh, but it's not really a great. Not really a great news. I mean, they had one, um, I think it's the first RNS since maybe the turn of the year, but December sometime, just announcing a new um, director on the board. Uh, 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 to be fair, a senior member uh, of the Hannon team, I believe. And therefore, it's, you know, it's, a, it's a positive move, the fact that their partner or their joint venture partner is, is joining the board and adding um, some some weight in there. But I think the bulk of the, the increase is is on speculation for next week. I think it's next week. Next week or the first week of all, of April that um, Codal are going to, you know, basically give a quarterly update of where they are with the the Bugani project. Um, and uh, and I, I, you know, I'm 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 going to appear cynical here, and I and I and I don't mean to be because I actually really like Codal and I really like Bernard Aylward. I think he's one of the good guys out there. Um, but I'm just worried that that with you know production expected at the end of the year. Um, and we know full well that when you know mines set up, there can be delays anyway. So you know the end of the year is going to be the earliest that they start production. You know at the moment the 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 Twitter fees that Code will put out, I think the most they've done is they they've built a road, they built a bridge and a road, right? So so they can get equipment over to the site. So there's still loads and loads and loads of work to do. So I wouldn't be surprised if there's a little sort of bit of by the rumors to other facts um, when the announcement comes out and it does start to dip down again. Because what will certainly happen after this um, update is that news will go probably quiet again for a short while. Um, and uh, and I also think that at the moment, when you've got um, you know companies like Premier, which we're going to talk about later on, uh, when you've got people like them starting to reduce uh, or getting getting sold out because of certain news items, a lot of that money is going into people like Code and Minerals for short-term trade. So I do, do worry a little bit that there's going to be a bit of a dip um, um, after the announcement. But if there is, then maybe that's just a good buying opportunity. Well, I'm 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 looking for it to go to 0.55, so I'm sticking my neck out. Um, the, I, I think the bounce was I spotted that around the mid 30s, so it's doing it's doing well. And where's, uh, resi where's resistance, as you can see it in your chart? Yes, that red line is it's in a falling channel from uh, this time last year. The top of the channel there at 0.55, which you know it's even, below 0.3. Yeah, and you can see there was a rally in October, November to that line. And I would guess, especially with the the, the fifty day line rising, it bounced off that fifty day line uh, last week or whatever it was. I think that it could get up to 0.55 even if it fails, you know. There, so I think it's a decent looking chart, you know, the higher low for March, etc., versus uh, February. And you know, I think I'm just you know sticking my neck out. Um, I'm th I'm thinking that Codal is going to go a bit better, and I, it, it's good to see the list of the the five day rises that. You know, they are they are generally, you know, like Gfinity is back from, you know, being in the bin. Uh, Alien Metals is back from being in the bin. I think I interviewed them during the week, so that may be why it's back from being in the bin. What a <laughs> fine interview it was. Uh, GCM Resources, um, one of my best charting uh, calls of late, which was very, uh, which is very nice. And it sort of stayed up as well, which is, and you know, going up and staying up is also a sign of the market's turning around. Because in, in you know, yep. the, in the bad old days, people were just like, Oh, my shares have doubled. I'm getting out, you know, and I'm going to buy some yeah. milk and you know, uh, you know, pay my gas bill, etc. So it looks a little bit better on that uh, front. Well, how, how is um, how is Hornby looking? I know you 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 charted them before, and I know there was an RNS this week where uh, Mike Ashley is getting involved. Is that right? For some reason, yeah, I think Fraser's have increased their stake. Uh, this is the one I was trolled on. So obviously it keeps going up because you know I was criticised for you know for sort of just oh you can you can draw a line anywhere. <laughs> you just draw them anywhere, don't use that. You know, oh yeah, that's right. I draw them anywhere, so it, it goes completely pear shaped, and I look like a fool. That's that's my strategy, you know. <laughs> uh, and so you can see that uh, that red line there, which I just drew la randomly with my eyes closed, uh, has become a, a pivot of price. Very straight hand. <laughs> yeah, sorry, yes, and uh, and then the next level up is is that purple one, and I made it purple just because it's pretty, you know, or it's pinky sort of. I don't know. What that <laughs> is, actually. Uh, that I choose the colours randomly. I have to admit, just whatever looks pretty on the on the day 
And because there's an art to this, you know, there is an art to this. But you can see this is this looks like a mid-move consolidation around 35 pence, and it's ready for the 46p, hopefully by by the next time we speak. By next week. And, what, and what's Mike Ashley is doing? Which you know, I did read something. He's, I thought first of all he was buying in, but he's actually um, um, is he just doing some sort of consultancy or something? Did I read? Yeah, I haven't followed. You know, because I'm just you know, I'm just uh, riding the wave of getting the chart right. I, I don't look yeah. at the other stuff. But I mean, no, I, I know, mean, I know, you, I know, you only spend time doing random lines. That's what you yes, exactly. Saying. But you know, it's exci yeah. It's exciting that uh, you know you've got him in the background, and there's one or two other things which. Uh, are in the background there, and I, so I think there's a keen buyer in that stock, and uh, yeah. that's I think all all I can reveal at this this point. <laughs> so 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 before we sort of go off, you better put up um, hummingbird resources. Come on, let's let's just you know feel bad for a little while. So let's see your friend um, Dan. I don't really have of... I don't really have friends. You know, my friends are the charts. Your acquaintance. Yeah, yeah, it is, you know. Um, so, yeah. um, so that's that. So here, actually, what was what was interesting is that the shares you know, they've been in a falling channel since uh, August, and they, you know, they or they hit the lower parallel exactly at sort of four p. Yeah. And as is usually the case with uh, Hummingbird News, which I tweeted out on the on the day the shares were uh, uh, were down, that they the market tend they tend to get punished very you know disproportionately badly by the market uh, i don't know whether you know what that is whether it's uh, um you know the, the 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 perception of the company or where it's based or whatever it is but you they have a a local situation and the whole thing the, the whole share price is brought down you see what i mean so yeah. that is a bit strange you know they've got you know they're multi-asset multi multi-jurisdiction but they have one problem in one place and the in the share you know the share price goes down 30 40 percent so um the issue yeah. here is that yeah, go on. I, I was just going to say, I think I think the 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 issue here. I mean, the issue is obviously that they, you know, their mining contractor at um, Carusa has has basically walked out, right? And he's and and I saw the next day, which I think was the second step down in the share price, that um, they'd made a statement that it was because Hummingbird hadn't paid them. I think it's twenty-seven million dollars, quite a lot of money, I think. Um, and um, and then they also gave a, basically a resume for themselves, how well respected they were, and different companies they worked for, and so on. And you know, they'd never been in a lawsuit before, and so on, and so on, and so on. So, um, so I think I think there was, you know, there was quite a shock, you know, of of a, of a news item. But I think then I think over time, and you know, and I've been following Hummingbird well since we've been talking because I actually did a, a critique of one of your videos, didn't I, with Dan? Um, That's how and, we um, became friends. Acquaintances. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Sorry, I've got acquaintances. To, not even listening to my own conversation. <laughs> and um, and 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 I think what unfortunately what's happened is that you know Dan has you know wrongly or rightly made a number of statements in both RNSs and interviews that ultimately have not turned out to be. Um, I want to true isn't necessarily the right word because I'm not saying that he's necessarily lying, but they haven't come to fruition what he stated in those particular um, events. And I think at the moment, and you can read on social media, and there's a, there's a lot of um, despondency and arguably lack of trust at the moment with anything that I mean said, and that just gets exaggerated when these sort of news items come through, right? I think the the only, the only you know the, the defense to that you know from you know CEO's defense would be you know these are you know these are black swan events in a in a normal in very volatile jurisdictions and with uh, slightly volatile uh, counterparties and therefore you know one you know one can't necessarily um you know guard against them or warn you know one one has a plan and then the contractor goes away or there's a flood or there's a civil war or there's a this or that and that's the sort of the lay of the land it's not you know it's, it's not i think that the necessarily the company i'm not saying in this case it is whether it is or it isn't but you know there are things that you know you can't you know, I can't, I can't, you know, we've got a, we're doing a podcast now, you know, maybe the Wi-Fi goes off or, you know, the, the battery runs out of my computer. I mean, that, those are things that you don't necessarily, you know, uh, you know, expect. So, yeah, but, the, yeah, but, yeah, but, but in, the, in this particular circumstance, you know, uh, a mining contractor walking out being owed, you know, um, allegedly $27 million isn't something that ha happens on a, a day. You know, it's not something the guy comes in and says, oh, you haven't paid my bill of $27 million yesterday. I'm leaving. This has been building up over time. There's been a dispute here. Um, mm -hmm. So this is not this is not the Wi-Fi going down because, you know, someone's knocked out the power station. Right. This is no. this is a little bit different. 
Um, and, 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 it's, and it's the first time it was ever raised. All of a sudden, there's no news of this. You know, all of a sudden, there's a, you know, the, the plant is just about a nameplate production, according to, to Dan. But now they can't put any product through it because no one's mining the product. You know, and, it, and it's just, you know, it's, it's a, the market does, you know, market and shareholders, they don't like surprises. And it was a surprise. Yeah. So th this is uh, obviously rather more than the, the dog ate my homework type situation. Yes, it's Freddie Star ate my hamster. Yes, yes exactly. Yes. <laughs> um, all right. Well, so I think that's a, a pretty good rundown of the. Uh, well, so, there's just one so, thing, so, actually, There's one or two things. I suppose we just might it might be worth looking at the uh, the FTSE just to see whether it's yeah, yeah, see where we are now, right? See where we are now. Um, we I had my seventy eight fifty target previously uh, for the end of uh, next month because I was so despondent. I thought uh, the market was just moving by one point a day. Um, but it actually has broken the top of that rising August trend channel. Let me try and get a better uh, blocking it, really. Um, rising August trend channel is that one, and that's that's where it was. We had that a triangle breakout, which actually was the start of the move. We've got rising 50 and 200-day lines, so that's all very nice as well. Um, and we had the – my favorite signal is the bounce off RSI 50. We had three of them. You normally yeah. only have one, so we had three. I've never seen it. It's like – it's a bit like in May last year, there were three – failures at rsi 50 and then that gave the dip into july so it's it can be a very magical signal um, obviously at the moment i'm looking for a we're overboard now though right yeah don't, oh, care, oh, about oh, don't, don't, don't care about that um the um no i mean Put your head in the sand <laughs> yeah exactly uh so so in the near term in the near term um, looking for uh, 8020, which I suppose would just take us back to. Oh, am I right in saying, because I, I did some research on this, am I right in saying that 812, that the um, the February number that you can see, obviously in February there, that is the all-time high of the FTSE, right? Uh, the I think the all-time high might have been uh, that type, the intraday. Yeah, that one there, yeah. yeah. 8047 and then closing at 8012. Uh, yeah, 8012. 80, so so we're, we're, we're pretty close to that, right? I think I think this probably it's probably the weekend market's effect. I think, I think it is. I think you're probably you know right. just the bears have just they've looked at this. They look at these videos. They've just given up on going short. They just say, okay, just let it go. Just let it go now. We we obviously that the, the hundred viewers that we get are obviously all whales. Yeah, they, exactly. Uh, no, no, they, no. They, I mean, as, as I said, Tim Blake. He you know, he came up to me. Uh, you know, I don't know how he found me actually. Uh, he came up to me yesterday afternoon and said, you know, great, you know, great uh, work. And I said, well, you know, we didn't really do anything. But the overall channel here, if we get really lucky, right, and we have cracked, you know, we've cracked the twenty-five year consolidation, it would be up to eighty-five hundred, let's say, by you know, by the summer. So that would be, and, the, and that's, and that's prob that'll probably, you know, that's like um, the overall, the overall channel there, which I'm trying to find. It's, it's from, um, it's back in, uh, it's a multi-year one. That's from 2006 or seven. That yeah. channel is heading to eight, uh, is heading to 8500, which uh, which would be wonderful. Uh, the other markets, obviously, which are flying, well, they were flying. Um, Bitcoin was flying. It had a bit of a rug pull during the week, but rising, yeah, did, rising trend did, channel there. Uh, but it did actually bounce above sixty thousand, which I thought was a a, a very you know positive development. Uh, it's did you see, I bet you didn't see my little Bitcoin video, did you? Why I predicted that bounce? Did you? Yes, I did. I predicted exactly where it was because there was a a confluence of resistance. Zach, you understand what I that did. is, right? Yeah. Uh, that's, that's, video. Well, at the moment, there's a confluence of resistance around sixty eight thousand which i think was the old high support, support sorry sorry confluence of support i'm getting it the wrong way around <laughs> okay well that's that's fine you're still learning um but <laughs> the uh no the, so, so hopefully while we're above sixty thousand, we're still on track for the big move to you know eighty thousand and beyond so that's basically you know bitcoin oh, and it's and a lot of it is driven was driven by you know the fed come with its um dovish stance and now I, I don't know if you've seen the dxy today and overnight but it's zoomed back up again um, which I think is primarily down to the shock in Europe yesterday that the Swiss bank decided to cut interest rates, and there might be a uh, uh, you know a follow on by the um, by the uh, the Euro, Euro bank before the the Fed does it. Um, right. I think the DXY is above one hundred and four now, right? Or it was well, really it, well, I've got it at uh, well, that's maybe from yesterday, so it's like an old old chart. But uh, I've got it live here, live here, and it's one hundred four four, so it's gone right oh, okay. up. Okay, all right. Well, that's really useful, isn't it? The other market I wanted to look at was uh, was was gold, um, which actually nearly hit my my um, end of uh, Mar end of April target twenty two sixty twenty two seventy, um, but it's done very well. You know, it bounced off twenty one fifty, which was the old December peak. So it's behaving un un yeah, but it, but it, uncharacteristically well. 
But but again, I don't know if you've seen this. I've just looked at it now live, and it's twenty one sixty five now. And again, it's dipped down because the dollar has gone up. Yeah. Um, so you so think that's see... you think that's it for gold for the time being? No, no, not at all. I think I think that I think the dollar's playing around. I think I think you know there was the, the Fed this week caused it to to dip, and then you know the the Bank of England and the Swiss Bank did some things that they didn't know one expected. Swiss Bank certainly cutting rates, and the um, the BOE being a little bit dovish. And what I think has happened is the markets are, are looking at the the projections of interest rate differentiations and now what they're seeing is that as you go through a longer period probably the next six months that the, the banks would cut rates at similar time so therefore the differentiations won't be too different to today uh, and therefore the dollar is recovering a little bit but i think that's just a like a 24-hour knee-jerk thing i think it's ultimately it'll still start to dip back down to the 103s 102s again as we go through even possibly later today no, I mean, uh, it's a great move on gold it's move, moving around like a yeah. crypto i mean it's doing yeah, it's yeah. good stuff it must be quite exciting on Comex, etc. So. so, so just before we go into finish off with Prem, do you want to just introduce our um, uh, guest? Because we'll, then I'll uh, I'll put that video in as we go through. So, is, who is it that we're going to talk to? We're speaking to Adrian Hargrave, who's a CEO at Scene, and Scene is spelled with an extra E, S uh, triple E N. Uh, I think the code is actually uh, uh, Scene spelled normally, but um, you'll have to, have to get back to you on that one. Um, but uh, it's a sort of a a video enhancing platform. I mean, but anyway, Adrian, I'm sure, is the person to explain it properly. So, of course, uh, last week we had uh, our first extra guest and somebody uh, trolled us and said that three is a crowd. But actually, as people know, regular viewers will know, even two is a crowd. So that is actually not really a concern of us. Uh, but I, we had. I, I'm happy to leave, Zach. It's not a problem. Well, no, no, but it wouldn't be the same without you and your hat, right? Um, but um, we have our special guest this week is Adrian Hargrove. How are you today, Adrian? I'm very well, Zach. How are you doing? And how's Steve? I'm doing well. It's uh, it's Friday. It's always good. And this is my winding down by doing extra work on a Friday. That's that's how I do it. So uh, people take note. Uh, but Adrian, you're from Scene, which is spelled with three E's, and uh, maybe that that's a difficulty for some people. Yeah, I you know I get um, you know I get asked at home why we can't spell our own name sometimes, but other <laughs> people on the other hand think it's a great name and makes us different. So you know you can't please everybody all the time, Zach. So who are these people who think it's a great name? Um, so I guess more in the marketing world and actually some of our customers listen to it, it and it, say, yeah, it's trendy though. It's trendy. A differentiator. It's very a very trendy name. Well, yeah, I mean. It, it's different, right, Zach? So, um, and the idea is obviously you see an you see an extra, so you get an extra e in there. You know, you're seeing extra from within the video. That was the original idea when we changed the name from Entertainment AI. Right. Okay. Well, so you're a bit of a you. You could be a bit of a Trojan horse for this uh, week for weekend markets because uh, what you do is actually you know we we are obviously in, in great need of of your services. Given that if we were using your services rather than getting a few hundred. Uh, people mostly throwing uh, rotten fruit at us. We'd have, you know, hundreds of thousands of people throwing rotten, you know, metaphorical rotten fruit at us. <laughs> I'm sure no one would be throwing rotten fr fruit at you guys. But um, but look, part of what we do, as you know, Zach, is we take the we take the videos. We try we find the most interesting pieces. We help to slice them up. Um, that means that we can find shorts that we can put onto YouTube or social or TikTok, Instagram, start attracting more viewers that way for you. Or also just doing a compilation of best bits and you know doing that from different uh, from different podcasts over the period. So yes, it's people generally you know some people sit down and watch all of this. Other people just want to see the best bits, the best highlights. And so you want to so you take you, you take the three seconds of of, of uh, funny stuff in our thirty minute forty minute uh, Zoom call and and you know really like get it out there. Exactly. That's um, that's one of the things. Absolutely, one of the things we do. The other one, right? I don't know. Not so much for you, for you, but Zach, we've discussed this as well with your bulletin board here. Is if people put it on the website, you know, we'd um, we'd split it up into the different all the different stocks. People could just go to the bit they're interested in and maybe subscribe for a service. Obviously, in social media, that's harder. But on your own website, we want to help drive. We want to help drive more customers to you, more repeat business, more sales from within the video that's the the key difference and, and your ai d does this cut and cut and uh, uh slice and dice if you like automatically but yeah i mean it reasonably automatically steve someone's got to go and watch it as well make sure you know it goes 
it's on brand, it's on message. And obviously, the more we work with someone, the better it gets as well, because we have to train it a little bit to, you know, different different types of video have different um, different use cases. For example, if you're looking at the highlights of a football match, right, you need to see the visuals, you need to read the, you need to read, you know, you do the NLP, natural language processing, so you're hearing from the commentators, but sometimes there is no commentary, right, so you've just got to follow where the goal is. In case like this one, it would be trying to find those places where we're able to look through the you know, key words, key emotional words that come up, but also things Frederick like African. That, that's or, that's the word that you know. That's the word that we know. This, <laughs> Steve loves it. Any any time he says all the time he says Premier African Minerals, he wants to have a collection of that. I'm I'm not going to talk about them today. Why not? What's wrong? <laughs> so so i have a question agent so so yeah. do you say that you could also pick up on for example not just the words but the body language so of course you'd hope to think yeah. that if if one party is smiling or just or laughing exactly. that's a funny yeah. moment yeah yeah it's just laughing smiling you know you pick up on the sounds as well you know so you know our question it would be not just a smiling face i mean they tend to go hand in hand right smiling face and laughter you don't tend to have a laugh without somebody smiling but that's the kind of thing we pick up on as well yeah, yeah. yeah. so um so... i was also intrigued when i saw when i looked at some stuff earlier on you, you also do the um i'm not sure what the, the the right industry phrase is but you do the sort of in video marketing um yeah so we call them shoppable video prompts right steve so as you're watching you know so if, for example let's just say you may not talk about Premier African Minerals today, but I will for a second. Um, let's just say <laughs> no, I will. Talking... Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> but let's just say you're talking about Premier African Minerals, right? In, in your in your in the block as you're talking, we'll put a little we'll put a little picture in the corner of Pr Premier African Minerals that might take you off to their website, so you can go and learn more, or it could take you to AJ Bell. You know, if you were sponsored by an AJ Bell or a Hargreaves Lansdowne or something like that. Go and buy the stock directly. Sell shares in, in Premier African Minerals. Click here. Is that is that? What <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But, but sure. Can you can you also do things like because uh, I saw that you you could also let, let's say for example you have a product in your video uh, and, yeah. and I, I know I, I thought of trying to think of a stupid example earlier on and I've just this this week I've just launched a sort of new series called Cash and Coffee and it's just a, a very m early morning uh, review of some of the the key indices that have happened yeah. overnight. Now I could for example create some mugs with cash and yep. coffee logo or something on there yep. and that could be shown in the video somewhere on the table and you could have a little uh, icon that comes up and says you know yep. buy this mug or whatever the, the, you know, the key exactly is. so that's one of the key things we've you know we've certainly learned as with customers we're working with you have to write buy this thing underneath it because people yeah. aren't seeing yet you know they see the little thing appear in the corner they don't realize they can click on it unless you make it really obvious right yeah. so you, you'd write buy this mug and it takes you straight to the shopping page if depending on how you know, depending on how you're set up, we could integrate it so it automatically fills the basket with it as well. And all they have to do is then go. Well, that, that was one of my next questions. Was I'm assuming you're relying you're relying on from, from a shopping standpoint, you're relying on the the clients back-end service you don't create the back-end service itself. You're not like a, a Shopify where you create you're, you're like no. a, a dropship model or something. No, no, we're not. I mean, again, who knows where you're going? You know, down the line, right? But today, all we all we do is help effectively. You know, we're helping to drive more traffic and we're helping to shorten the sales funnel. It doesn't always have to be about, you know, just, again, it doesn't have to be always be about selling. We work with a lot of sports clubs and they want, obviously, to drive more sales from their fans, right, obviously. But actually, they don't just want to inundate them with sales. So maybe learn about a player. It could be about engagement as well. Mm. Just make it clear that it's not all about selling. But obviously, that's where most people make their ROI, ultimately. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So... But yes, it's kind of we're not going to be taking on Shopify, um, but we do integrate with different platforms. But but the, but the but the the banner that comes up, the, for example, that says you know buy this mug, yeah. right? Um, um, if you click on it, it's, it's a hyperlink. You can click on it, and it will take you to a take you take whatever you whatever, the, whatever the link is. Yeah, exactly. Take you straight there. And depending on the work you know our customer or we've done with our customer, it will automat it can automatically fill the shopping basket potentially with a coupon code as well. Yeah, right. so so it makes it as easy as possible. You know, remove the remove the friction, I guess. Right, so just make it in this world where people just want to do two clicks, otherwise they get bored. Yeah, you know, it's, yeah. make it as simple as possible. Well, look, I, I I've been known for being quite cheeky sometimes, Adrian. So I'm going to ask a question, if I may. One of the things that obviously would help, um, I guess, yourselves out as well as well as ourselves is a, is maybe we can send you this video, the whole video, when we finished. 
and your yep. company can then do that cut and paste of, of uh, shorts and so on, obviously free of charge. Um, and, um, and then we'll um, we'll then post this on different TikToks and it'll show people then also who are watching this video examples of what your um, technology can do. Yeah, 100%. We should do that. Totally, Steve. Okay. I think um, yes, yeah, Zach and I have discussed this as well. Exactly. In terms of Apart from the freebie, uh, so you just tell us a little bit about um, Scene. It's on uh, the AIM market, right? And uh, all that stuff. Yeah. Sort of yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we're at AIM, as Steve's obviously alluded to, you know, our core, you know, our core technology is AI for video, but it's not generative AI in the sense of making videos for the people. It's taking existing video content that's been made and helping them sweat that asset harder. Mm. Right. So and we do that by identifying the key bits. You know, we have an AI platform that goes in and can identify in every frame of video all the different people that are there all the all the words all the emotions and then takes that aggregated info and tries to find the the top you know in some cases it's five seconds in some cases it's a minute because it depends really it's moments of different length depending on what the what the event is and we use that with our customers for three primary goals one, as you said, Zach, is let's help you get more social video, more social views by driving, you know, on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, they've got different ways. So you can have a, you'll have a really long form video like this. You'll have the seven, eight minute highlight, the nine minute highlight video, and then you'll have the shorts. So we can help produce all of those. We can help remix across different um, different video or different, um, different podcasts as well. So for instance, every time we can do a, Super Cup every time Steve has mentioned Premier African Minerals in the last you know last year. It'll be right. a long video. <laughs> so, well, it's amazing what people watch though, Steve. But, <laughs> if you tell me about it. <laughs> but um but you know, the key really, you know, social is great, but ultimately how do you make money? And that's what people really care about. And one of the challenges with video today is people get given budgets, get told to go and make a video and maybe get more social views, but actually attaching an ROI to it is quite difficult. Yeah. Uh, so where we come in is actually because of our ability to monetize the video with e-commerce, that's a that's a key differentiator. But we can also run ads as well. So we work with publishers who are interested in you know continuing to run advertising at the front of videos, but also want to sell subscriptions to online subscriptions, or they want to send people off to affiliate links. For mm -hmm. so, for instance, if you're talking about an insurance, you know the insurance market and how car insurance inflation yeah. is going up you'll have a little link to money supermarket.com as you're watching the video and you know we've been speaking to quite a few publishers ad rates are softer than they were you know uh, you know a couple of years ago especially on digital so they're looking at new ways of monetizing their video the other area we're also doing work as well is you know in training videos so how to type of content that's something that naturally fits with us too you don't necessarily sell that as uh, but you can use that for training videos we're doing that with um you know with american leap detection in particular which is a business over in the us but a couple of others as well where you've got a 10 minute training video but uh, you know ultimately you may want to find just one piece i've got one problem that i need to solve i'm sure we've all had this i, I have a volvo xc90 at home and the number of times that I've forgotten how to put the seats in the back of the the back of the car down and up. And I find this video on YouTube that's 10 minutes long, but I want 30 seconds of it. You know, mm -hmm. that's where you want, you know, you want to be serving up to people the quick solution. You know, so if you're after, for instance, if you're if you're going and let's say you're doing your anti-money laundering training, I've done this before when I used to work in the city. You get these 20 minute videos, you have to you have to watch all of the videos answer the questions at the end of it you get seven out of ten you have to go watch the whole thing again well actually to speed up the training process we deliver these three moments from the videos that you got wrong and you can retake yeah. the questions and pass faster so so there's multiple use cases and you know i think for us yeah it's it's about atomizing video content and taking advantage of short attention spans um, and helping people make more of that. Okay, well, speaking of short attention spans, um, maybe that's a, a good place to uh, <laughs> to stop. Um, actually, last last week we had um, um, Tim Blake, who was uh, live and direct from a travel lodge, 
Uh, I take it you, you, you're at Premier Inn or something like that. Is that is that correct? Or is it the Dorchester? I don't know. I think with the blurred background, it looks like some sort of prison. <laughs> yeah, well, that's... Uh... <laughs> well, yeah, it's... Um, it, Are you able but... to reveal your location or is that would that damage your shareholder standing? That, 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 you know, Zach, I'm an international man of mystery. So uh, <laughs> got, to, got to keep that quiet for now. Yeah, but okay. um, right. but no, I'm in a no, I'm in a hotel room. It's not it's not a branded hotel, but it's um you know it's not let's put it this way, not the highest quality. You're not at the Dorchester level. Yeah, 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 yeah we'll never know. Maybe you can tell us offline because you know the curiosity there is you know the curiosity. Don't tell us offline because we'll tell the world. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes, exactly. So anyway, Adrian Hargrave, uh, CEO at Scene. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks. Right, thank you both, and see you soon. Okay, that was great. Thanks very much, Adrian. So, what do you want to talk about now, then, Zach? Is it the uh, is it the clickbait time? I think it. I think it is actually. People have you know made it this far without having that fix of uh, Premier African Minerals. Uh, well, they had they had, they did have a lengthy fix yesterday because I managed to to nip in a twenty seven minute um, sort of a diatribe um, and whinge about. Uh, the latest RNS, but as, as I'm sure you've read, I'm sure you haven't read all of the notice of the AGM. But as you've read some of the details, um, you know, bottom line is AGM in two weeks' time, eighth of April. Uh, the request is to authorise uh, the board of directors um, to have um, or have the authority, I should say, to release up to 4.5 billion new shares, 16.1 percent dilution. Just the 40, feel- Just the 4.5 billion. Just the 4.5 billion, uh, 16.1% dilution um, over the next two years. Of course, they did this in August last year, where it was 5 billion shares over two years, but they decided they managed to use the 5 billion up in six months. So, um, you know, and as much as much as um, you know, social media said, well, you know, it's just an authorization. It doesn't mean they're going to issue any shares. But then, I know, but then the um, but then the uh, you know the the notice of the AGM specifically says there are. Uh, at least three categories. Uh, one is being George's loan. The other one being the mining contractor. God forbid that Prem gets in the position that uh, the the hums in. Uh, and also a contingent liability that has become a liability from a broker that they've used in the past, which means that immediately there's a legal obligation for four million pounds uh, to be spent on, on these three categories. So, so as much as it is, you know, you know, on paper, uh, a request to give authorization to the board to issue shares if they want to. You know, by definition or by de- by default, they are going to issue shares for probably at least four million pounds straight off the bat, and and that's a fact. Now, the interesting thing that that, that that probably more than anything is that the share price didn't really react that negatively. I mean, it did have a big dip down at one stage. It immediately went down to sort of eighteen or something, I think, um, from twenty five. But um, even yesterday, I think it went green at one stage. Uh, I don't know what it is today. I can probably see very quickly, but it's um. Uh, it's what twenty four six five now, so it's not it's not you know com- com- compared to before the announcement came out, um, it's actually pretty much at about break even. Um, so which was already is, anticipating that kind. Well, of- it was it was priced in, but it's for sure it was priced in. Um, but then there was a you know then there was another um, inter- interview with George yesterday, um, which I haven't done a video on. I'm not going to do a video on because it's you know very similar to what I did in terms of the the, the notice itself. But George, you know George looked very tired, which means he's working hard, which is good. Um, but um, but it, but it was still very open ended. There's no real commitment. There's going to be a shipment this this um, this month or even prior to the um, to the AGM, and that's that's the big unknown. Uh, to be fair, there was a couple of videos that were released um, through the week of the plant, um, which you know, which is good to see because it is a very big plant and there's a lot going on. Uh, it doesn't work very well, I think, at the moment, but it is you know very very big and it's got a lot of equipment there. Um, but um, but yeah, it's uh, it's it's disappointing. Uh, of course, the RNS says that you know the intention for the company is actually to source you know traditional debt funding rather than raise for um, you know um, shares, and this is just you know the the ability to raise in case they need it. But we all know you know the truth of what's going to happen, uh, and and the reality is, and this is this thing I struggle with a little bit. You know, the, the, I, I think that I think in the last AGM there was also a vote of confidence for George, but there's nothing put forward for this one, um, which I think that there should be. Uh, and I also, um, you, know, you know, don't like the last paragraph in the in the notice that basically says, look, if if people don't vote for this uh, particular funding, then you know the alternatives are you know, substantially uh, worse, um, which is which is a little bit of a you know, it's, it's not blackmail because it is the reality of the situation, but it's um, uh, it's just disappointing that it that is the case, and we are where we are, right? You know, it could have been could have been dealt with a lot quicker and a lot sooner, in my opinion. 
And so what, it was interesting because obviously, you know, this is your pet subject and everything else. Uh, how do the punters view your comments? Um, do you get sort of people saying, you know, you don't know what you're talking about, or it's fantastic, thank you for insight? Well, I, I, yeah, I mean, no, I mean, but it, is it a mixed the majority, bag? The, the majority of the people that watch the videos, uh, I mean, I mean, I get, um, uh, you know, 90, 99%, you know, likes, if you like, of the people that do do a thumbs up on the on the videos. Uh, I, I mean, I think the video I did yesterday, I probably had 50 comments, uh, and they're all in agreement with me, you know, no, no, no one is against them. There is a particular telegram group that is, um, that is prone focus, focus that I'm banned from. They don't, uh, uh, they don't, uh, they didn't, don't allow my videos. Although I was invited, uh, to join, um, not so long ago, but I actually said, uh, no, it's okay. I don't need to. In fact, I'm a member on a different name so I can see what they, they said. And then I am called various names and called various things, but that's okay. I've I'm, I'm tough skinned. I can deal with that. Uh, but generally, um, I think that the view now you can, you can sense, you know, if you do what I do over time, you can sense how the sentiment is changing and the sentiment towards George is very much changing. And I, and I think probably one of the reasons that uh, why he's not or the, why there isn't a vote of confidence in the CEO in this particular AGM is probably because he wouldn't win it. Right? Um, it would be a special resolution. So there will be 75 percent um, uh, of uh, the votes would have to be for him. All right? um, I, I guess I guess it's either way around. I'm not quite sure. But uh, but either way, there's a lot of people now that think, you know, you know, they would actually vote for the funding, but only if George goes. Right, and that's that's quite a strong feeling. After right? all the work he's done and everything else, somebody of his age as well, he's put a lot of it. He's put everything into it. <laughs> I know, I, and, and that's uh, and you know me, I'm all, I'm all for him. Yeah, no, no, I I only had I only had one bit of feedback this week about the uh, weekend markets, and somebody just said, you know, that Steve is such a nice guy. I said, what? Yeah. Which I was obviously, I, I, I found that hurtful because obviously it implied that I'm not. You know, it was like that. But I, but I, I mean, I mean, I, I don't want to. Normally good. I don't want to rub salt in the ruins, but I get quite a few people calling me out and saying, "Why don't you just do it on your own, Steve?" It would be yeah, yeah, but, um, yeah. You know, yeah, you're, or, doing you know the, you're doing the cash and coffee and everything else, and it's just you know, I feel like a spare. Well, week. yeah, I mean, I've been getting up at six o'clock every morning this week to do uh, to my research so I can get it ready for the start of the UK Open. We'll see how it goes. I'll do it for a month and see if it, it picks up. But I think it's going. Yeah, it I think I think it's five thirty. If you watch any of them. Five thirty in the morning. I've seen it as well. Actually, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know if you've watched any of them, but um, uh, they're only short. But uh, they're um, they're, they're just a just a very quick, concise summary of the sort of macro situation. Uh, so I mean, you're good at that. I, I mean, although I have to say, I get my Steve Deacon fix, you know, live, you know, with you. So I mean, I you know, you know, you, you know, you can call me anytime, right? So it's not, you know, it's uh, it's not a um, you know, there's not a you don't you don't have that sort of uh, withdrawal symptom, you no. Know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but on that um, on that wonderful note, um, obviously um, I've got my big day tomorrow. Yes, uh, have a good one. So that that regards to, uh, is something to, to, to the celebrate. <laughs> um, with FTSE being a record as well. I mean, it's all it's all coming together now. Bull, bull, you know, the bull market is here. So uh, thank you, Steve Deacon from BizDeck Academy, and see you at the same time. Yeah, have a good week, Zach. See you soon. Bye bye.